Welcome to Chess Explained by Master Number 14. In today's video, I'm going to play a Blitz game. I'm going to walk you through my thoughts, what I think. I'm going to explain them as well as I can. Let's go. So I'm playing currently on, on Lee Chess. We're going to play a three minute game plus two seconds each, each move. I came from, I just came from trying to record this video, but I lost. Um, and I want to provide the best quality. So it was a good quality game. Maybe let me know in the comments if you want me to plot the losses. I think it would be instructive as well. Okay, we have the white pieces against Bayat 2016. Good luck. We're going to open up with pawn to d4. Normally I play, it doesn't matter much what I play at the beginning. I I want to demonstrate that you don't need opening theory. Uh, my opponent offered a draw for some reason. Um, all sorts of weird things happen when I start um, recording. I'm going to play pawn to g3, which is a very weird move. In fact, this should pretty much throw my opponent out of theory and myself. It's a double-edged sword. I don't know what I'm doing in terms of opening, but I know that we have to develop our knights and bishops, and that's going to be good enough. So right now, I, I notice that I can get the bishop here with knight h4. This happens very often, so there's something called opening a window, which is pawn to h6, for instance. I'm playing because I've got knight h4, bishop h7 is possible, but black didn't open a window, so I'm going to chop this bishop off. Now, I could also keep the tension, which is... Pretty much not taking this bishop because it's not going anywhere anyway but you can argue that it is going somewhere and it's going to h5 so i'm going to take the take this h takes g6 to, taking towards the center which is generally pretty good and now should i castle short side or should i play bishop f4 or e4 i have many options i could castle short side as i said but i'm a little bit scared that black will have some sort of counterplay um even though i don't see anything direct I'm also worried about bishop b4 in some scenario or in some line. So I'm going to play e4, kind of giving some 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 work to do to this knight. Because other than that, this knight is not doing much. This knight is attacking the over-defended d5 pawn. So black is doing a very good job at pr protecting that pawn. So I can't do much in terms of that. This knight is doing, doing nothing on c3 other than that. So I'm going to give it some work by playing e4, which means that now this these two Two, two minor pieces are doing some 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 damage d6 sorry c6 yeah so that's holding the center even further this is what we call semi slav or slav triangle center very iconic from the slav and i can occupy space in this position which i'm assuming is good for me but I, at the same time i have the bishop pair which means that i i would like to open up the position so you know what? I'm going to castle. I'm not worried about any counterplay in the h file. I don't believe any. The knight cannot go, come to g4. It's very difficult for this queen to get involved in the h file in some way. Um, I don't think this is a problem. So I'm going to castle. I'm going to say, hey, da uh, hey David. Hey, Black. Um, you, you haven't castled yet. Uh, I have. So it means that I can start attacking soon. Um, knight d7 is a weird one. Because now e5 is a better, better version of things. For instance, knight h5, g4 is already winning the knight. So either knight h7 or knight g8 has to be played, and that looks ugly. Maybe black is trying to close the position. Because if the position closes uh, up, my bishops are not going to be that good. So, interesting. Might um, It's very tempting to go e5, but maybe I should not. Um, maybe I should not. Maybe I should finish, finish development with bishop f4. Maybe I should play rook e1. But rook e1 looks very... Interesting. I'm, I think I'll play rook e1. I'm going to keep the tension. As I said, I don't want to close the position. I think my bishops would be a little bit angry at me. Uh, I'm going to play rook e1, keeping the tension. Now, if queen c7, bishop f4, for instance, was a problem. Queen b6, maybe a4, a5, I'm not sure. Knight b6 was played. Uh, makes sense, but I'm going to harass. Should I harass that knight? a5 comes. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm gaining too much. Let's see. Bishop f4 is always an option. The problem with this kind of structures for, for white, or with this kind of position, is that black is very solid. It's very difficult to break through. So I would like to ideally get some sort of c4 pawn break. But for now, it seems very difficult to get to achieve. So I'm going to play bishop f4. I have a very clear idea. I'm going to take on d5. If e takes d5, my rook becomes good. If c takes d5, knight b5 is something black has to worry about. And if, if knight takes on d5, then something bad is going to happen. I'm going to play knight takes, sorry, e takes d5. I don't think knight takes b2 is a problem. And knight b5 might be a problem. Or black, of course. And b3 is also there. So I'm not sure what, what black is doing with this move, to be honest. Um, 
C65 seems the most logical one. E65 seems too risky. The E file is too open. Okay, Knight takes D5. Interesting. So I have a couple of options once again. I'm going to take on D5 once and I'm going to play B3. And I think that I'm pretty happy with this transformation because now the bishops all of a sudden maybe become a little bit more active. Um, play Bishop E5, trying to, trying to provoke F6 because that would be pretty good for me. Uh, and now I'm going to play Rook C1, trying to get C4. I'm running out of time, which is not ideal. But as usual, I think... This is a double-edged sword because my opponent has to do a very good job at not rushing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm threatening c4, I'm threatening maybe h, sorry, h4, h5 ideas. In fact, that looks very attractive now that I think about it. h4, I'm going to go h4, h5. That is one pawn break that I do, I do, I could go for. Queen b5, trying to trade queens would be a little bit annoying. I think I'm going to go something like queen d2. And I'm trying to think on my opponent's time, it's, it's not like... I can, I can, I can have the luxury of, of taking my time anymore. I spent it all in, in, um, in other things. I'm going to play queen d2, a reactive move, um, pretty much playing against what my opponent is doing. I have to watch out because all of a sudden my opponent has counterplay in the c file, which is of course not ideal. I'm going to play rook e2, Overprotecting c2, which is necessary. I'm gonna play h5, making things complicated. As I said, I think in the last one, or in one of the last chess explained by Master, um, it's not over until it's over. So um, make sure that you, you absolutely make the, the, the most out of your position during time trouble because it's, it's not like you're the only one in time trouble. Oh my goodness, bishop f3. I'm keeping my cool as, as much as I humanly can. Um, my, my plan is king g2. I wanted to play queen f3 actually to, to attack h5, but I realized quickly that that was a blunder. Um, I just missed a very good opportunity to play queen h6. Um, but I play king, g, g, king g2 to, to sacrifice on h5, which I'm not sure. Which I'm not sure is working. Queen h6 is now available again. Bishop f6, bishop takes h5 might be a problem. This is interesting. Bishop f6, yeah. So what if I take on h5? What is going on? Now all of a sudden, if I can take on g6, bring my rook to h1. This is not clear at, at all. Ah, I see. Okay, now it is pretty clear. I'm gonna lose this. Maybe I get some... Uh, very sketchy. I'm not sure I have enough compensation. In fact, yeah, gh, rook h1... Once again, I think we're, we're both playing with the increment, but I have a trap. Bishop, uh, sorry, Bishop g5, Rook takes h5 would be winning for me, even though it looks like I'm losing my queen. Um, I'm actually trapping, or I'm, I'm threatening Rook h8. And now I'm taking on h5, so easy, easy, it's not. Whatever that means. I'm going to play g4, probably a bad move. Uh, I'm going to play takes. Play takes. Looks complicated enough. Queen h4 is probably a strong move in this position, which I missed. Do I have anything? I don't think so. Did I blunder this? Possibly. But as I said, it's not over until it's over. Rook d1 is strong. Okay, not found. King e2. Rook f3, maybe. Rook g3. Queen b4. All of a sudden, here it comes. Queen takes b7. Queen b5. Sorry if I stop commentating, this is intense. My goodness, that was a bad retreat by my opponent. Queen b8. Fate. Not sure what's going on to be honest, but I might get I might get a miraculous draw. Can we play for more? I don't think that's very realistic, so we're gonna have to be happy with the draw. Okay, well we didn't lose the game. Um I'm sweating like crazy, but yeah. I mean yeah. We should have lost that game a thousand times. But as I said, I guess time trouble is 
truly a very double-edged sword and intense. When, when you think of chess, you don't think this is pretty stressful, but it is stressful. Um, that's kind of recap what happened at the end. I think the, the game was pretty complicated. I think after g6, queen h6 might be winning. Bishop f6 doesn't exist, of course, because of, or it does exist, but it's just very bad because of bishop takes f6. And if you move the f pawn, g6 hangs, so yeah, I, I missed my opportunity. Play king g2. Um, queen d8 now is saving that queen h6 because of that. I sacrificed, I made things complicated, but then things happened. In this position, I think I should have sacrificed here on f5 and taken on h4. But it was still complicated. I, I decided to go g4, but h3 is a very good move by my opponent if I take on h3. Sorry. If I take on h3, rook takes h3, king takes h3, queen h4 is a problem. So I decided to go for g takes f5. But queen h4 is once again a very strong move. And I tried to keep as many pieces as possible. I'm 100% I'm sure that queen takes h4 is the, the least bad. But I'm trying to keep pieces over the board because once again I'm losing. Um, so as complicated as possible. So in this position, rook d1 is winning. Many things are winning. Queen f3 was played. Um, and my opponent allowed me to give a check. And give another check. And no, probably here I'm, I'm winning. But I'm not sure how. In fact... I might not be winning. I might have to play queen b5. And then something like queen c5. If king c7. And if rook c6, I'm, it might be a draw. In fact, I'm a hundred, almost 100% sure that this is a draw. But we managed to somehow trick our opponent into thinking that... That there was some sort of checkmate and then we got this repetition. So, thank you very much for watching. I guess that was, once again, instructive. It was crazy. I'm trying to keep it as genuine as possible. Um... I'm not sure I'm not sure whether you want something even more genuine. I'm not sure if you want something like David, manage your time better. David, just give us your winning games. If you have any questions or if you have any suggestions, please let me know. And as always, have a nice day.